Is this thing recording? Whew, I got technology challenges, y'all. Hey. Hey. It's Jen. I'm checking in. I'm going to try to make this video real short because, <laughs> ooh, I can talk forever, y'all. I really could about stuff that I really like. And then I've got a ready nose. I was outside. I caught myself taking stuff outside without a coat on. And I, I was outside for about a good five minutes. And yeah. So I'm paying for it today, but I got my team. We're going to make this work. Today I'm going to be talking about how you can build your own home apothecary. So, um, building a home apothecary. I was very easily intimidated by it when I first thought, oh, can I do this? I didn't have a black girl sitting in front of me telling me I could do this. I just didn't. Most of the healing disciplines that I have come to practice myself and do and practice within my community, I didn't have a black woman teach me. I'm just going to leave it at that. So it was, it was, it's very, it was very weird for me to learn this stuff because I don't know some some spaces I didn't feel fully comfortable because the people didn't look like me but I got what I needed I learned what I got got what I learned and now I don't mind telling you some of the basics of what I learned so that you too can feel comfortable with how to take charge of your own health so Building a home apothecary, I was very intimidated at first, but one of the first things that I did was um, the first plant that I got acquainted with was elderberry. So what I did before I even went to herbal school is that I learned, let me switch this around really quick. Okay, that's better for some reason. I feel like I had to switch my neck in order to be centered. Um... So one of the first plants that I got acquainted with was elderberry. I got acquainted with it by simply Googling what are some good, you know, plants for when you're sick. One of the first things that popped up after I really started digging, excuse me, was um, elderberry. So I started off with just like a four ounce pack of elderberry. I had it shipped from a place that I used to go to when I lived in Chicago, like an herbal store in Chicago. And I made some tea with that elderberry. And next thing you know, I started putting elderberry on everything. I started putting it on my, my syrup. <laughs> like I started putting it in my honey. Like me and elderberry, we like this. <laughs> we like this. And since I have learned of the amazingness of elderberry, I started thinking, you know what? I'm, I want to be like this with some other plants, you know? So I'm going to teach you how to be like this <laughs> with some plants. But I'm going to encourage you how to just pick one. Just pick one, okay? Just one plant and see how it goes. So about storing this one plant, because we're going to start small, right? You want to have a mason jar. You want to have a, a not a plastic, not a paper container. You want to have a glass container. The reason you want it to be glass is for many reasons. One, on an energetic level, um, glass tends to, um, how do I say this without sounding too pseudosciencey and weird and airy fairy? Hmm. Um, I don't practice these things before I get online. I just talk. Um, so glass, it, it tends to take on the energy of whatever is around it. For instance, if you put glass in, you know, in a, in a window seal with sun, it's going to take on the energies of the sun. Mind you, you, you don't want to store your herbs in sunlight, but that's just an example, okay? You don't want to put it in a paper bag. You definitely don't want to put it in glass, plastic, bleh. You don't want to put it in plastic because with those two things... Um, the plant is going to break down. Um, you might have some mold develop and it'll leach on whatever chemicals are around it. So if you put it in a paper bag, oh my God, if you put it in a paper bag, <laughs> the plant is going to leach on whatever is in that paper bag. 
if you put it inside of plastic, it's going to do the same thing with plastic. So plants, whether they are living or they are dead, plants are always living. I, I say that all the time. Plants are always living even when they are dead, okay? One of the amazing things about plants is they, they pretty much never die. They just, they, they do not die, okay? So you can take a plant out of the ground and you can dry this plant and that plant is still going to do its job even after it dried out. It's amazing to me. All right, so... Growing your herbs, if you want to have a situation where you're growing your own herbs, uh, growing your own herbs, what is wrong with me today? <laughs> if you are growing your own herbs, um, that's a whole nother video, that's a whole nother topic, that's something you can try, but chances are if you don't do this uh, a certain way, you could have some herbs that have mold on it. So I encourage you to either check back in with me for a later post or, you know, Google a few things, look some things up before you decide to grow your own herbs and dry them. Because if you don't do this a certain way, you can have some certain problems. Whew, okay, head of woman nose. Okay, so when storing your own herbs, you want to make sure that they are in glass containers. You don't want them in plastic or paper. Uh... You also want to make sure that uh, you don't have them in sunlight. Um, you want them to be airtight with lids on top. And um, rule of thumb is no sun, no water for dried herbs. So I have been to some websites where I wanted to order um, a particular herb. And I will email them and I will say, hey, so how do you store your herbs? And if they reply back to me that they store them in sunlight, no. So if you're in the industry of selling plants of any sort, you're not mandated by law to explain on the container or whatever you're shipping your labels. You're not mandated to explain on the label Um how you store your herbs. You're mandated to put like what the ingredients are. But I've literally emailed some companies <laughs> and they say to me, yeah. So like for instance, if they're making um, an oil that's been infused with an herb, I I've seen one company where they said, you know, they made it sound very um, magical, you know. They're like, yeah, um, we stored our herb in the window seal in the sun. And we let it just marinate in the sun with the flour and the herb and the oil. No. No, 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 no. If a company says that, don't, don't buy from them. Don't buy. So if you email them and you want to ask and you want to say, hey, so how do you store your herbs? If they reply back anything about being in the sun, don't do it. Even if they dried their herbs in the sun. Um, I mean, if you want to get them, you can, but cause <laughs> I have to be careful not to tell people what to do. But if, if, um, if they say anything about the sun, um, the sun is biodegradable. It breaks things down. So either the plant is not going to have full flavor or the plant has lost some of its nutrients, either or one of those things, sometimes both of those things are happening. So you want to get plants that are dried in, in like dark, cool, dry places. Not anywhere around water, not anywhere around sun. Even if it's an oil that they're making. Um, what else I got on here? Um, so if you want to wow your people at your next party, one of the things you can do if you want to decide to use water at all with your herbs. So let's just say you go to the store and you find some mint leaves. So if you wanna cut the mint leaves up or you know, shrivel them up with your fingers and you wanna put them in ice trays, that'll be a really nice treat. You know, for people, they can have minty, um, you know, minty ice cubes. I've done that before and I, I just think it's so cute. But if you wanna have minty ice cubes, that's something that you can do. You can have, tra you know, you can have herbs that you freeze, but, 
that's the only way I would say it's okay to have water around your herbs other than, you know, them being in the ground and them growing. Uh, what else we got here? Um, okay, so I can talk about how to dry herbs later. We're, we're not going to get into that because we're already at 10 minutes. Ugh. Um, so whenever you're putting your herbs inside of jars, you want to label them. Uh, you want to put the exact date, including the year. Most herbs, they go, I won't say bad, because uh, one thing about plants is they really don't expire. They might lose their potency. They might lose their strength, but they don't really expire. I mean, okay, so if you're storing an herb, where did I put it? Darn, where did I put my herb? Okay, if you're storing an herb, even um, even if it's not an herb, so any plant, I mean, I've literally taken jalapeno peppers and had them dried, you know? Um, or tomatoes, sun-dried tomatoes, you know? Um, I, yeah, so these are peppers. These are little tiny peppers. And if you just so happen to have, even if it's not an herb, if it's a dried pepper of any sort, you know? Oh, my God. That smells so good. I'm going to eat one right now. Okay. So, if you have, oh, that's really spicy. Woo! Oh, God. It's like candy, y'all. Sweet and spicy. So, one thing about this is it's not, it's not labeled. I advise against that. Try to label your stuff because usually it gets, it goes bad within two, three years. If you don't use it within two or three years, it's okay. It doesn't expire. I wouldn't suggest throwing it out. Um, one way that you can, well, not one way, several ways that you can use herbs whenever they're past their two or three year mark is uh, you can make teas out of them. You can crush them up. You can put them in your soil because then it adds nutrients to your soil. Um, how else? I think I, I wrote them down because, oh yeah. So you can do spices. You can mix them up in your salad dressings. Um, you can make some skin goodie. I call them skin goodies. So this is where you take an oil, like avocado oil, you put it in a jar, you throw the, the plant that's good for your skin, okay? That's good for your skin inside the jar, and you just put it in a dark, cool place for about two or three months. I'm saying two or three months because that's usually how long it takes for the herb to get inside of the oil, that's how long it takes the oil to break down the goodies of the plant. So um, another way you can put it in vodka, you can make a tincture, a whole nother post for a whole nother day. Or like I said, you can put them in the ground. You can give it right back to Mother Earth. You can say, hey, Mother Earth, I didn't use this within two, three years, but I know you'll put this to good use. Just put it in the soil. It can be like a fertilizer. Um, What else I got here? I don't know if I mentioned it, but when it comes to storage, you don't have to go out and buy mason jars. Sometimes you can just use a salsa jar or a jelly jar, like basically leftovers from what you get from the store. So for people that are out there that are like salsa eaters or, you know, you have jelly jars, keep them. I literally don't throw jars out. I literally don't. If something's glass, I'm going to keep it. <laughs> And if I don't keep it, then um, I'm going to put it in the recycling bin. But I've learned by having my own apothecary, I'm more conscientious of throwing things away. And my mindset has changed that nothing is trash. Um, I've also learned that even like I just did, like some days um, I don't really go out. I, I don't buy candy. I literally have gotten to the point where it, um, my favorite candies, they, they make me like regurgitate like I can't I, I can't have store-bought candy anymore like my body is literally literally repulsed I don't know it's just when you start changing energetically you can't tolerate certain things anymore and your body will let you know right away that's the intuitive part of the body of the body like oh no or yes this is what you need when you start bringing things around your biofield and you start ingesting things that are healthy, 
you have less tolerance for things that are not healthy. So for me, I literally will sometimes come in my kitchen and near my apothecary and I'll just be eating these. And I, and I don't crave things that are not healthy for me because my mind no longer makes associations with those things. I've introduced... Hmm. My so weird. I've introduced healthy things to my diet. So now, if my body needs something, I literally will start craving the things that I have started eating. Um, and I can eat this and I no longer crave other things. One thing though, I'm still I'm still having a problem with chips. So with chips, sometimes I'll take some kale. You know what? I'm going to do that today. Yes, I'm going to make some oven baked kale chips. Um, so like I still have that, but even then, like a lot of chips that I buy are not over processed. It's still plant material. It's still potatoes. It's still from the ground. So why don't you start getting into this stuff? Even if it was just like one plant, just start with one plant. Um, if you want more information about this, just hit me up. I don't mind. Um, I think I covered everything of the basics. Mm -mm 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 -mm. I wrote this stuff down because I'm just like, I'd be all over the place with this. Um, yeah. So glass containers, no sun. Check back here or somewhere if you want to dry your own herbs because oh, that's a whole other thing. Then I don't want you out here wasting plants, y'all. And be sure to check out our Sip Sig signature program. Um, and I think that's about it for today. Yeah. I'll see y'all later. I hope you guys have a, whoo, do y'all want to say a good new year? Yo, 2020 been crazy. 2020 been crazy. But I know 2021, 2021, that sounds so great. 2021 is going to be great. It is. Um, 2020 has been good to me in several ways. One of them, I've become more acquainted with plants. So yeah, if you have any questions, just let me know. And good luck. Blessings to you. With starting your own apothecary. I know you can do it. I know you can. And if you feel like you can't, I'm here to tell you that you can. You really don't need a lot of money. You really don't need a lot of resources. Just start with one jar, one plant. See you guys later. Bye. Mwah.